Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a one-off special as I meet up with Jess, a 21-year-old student from Norwich who tried on a traditional Islamic headscarf in order for it to lead to, or in hope for it to lead to more religious understanding. Now I met up with Jess for the day to see her experience in wearing the hijab. February 1st is World Hijab Day. On this day, we invite all you ladies from across the globe, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, to experience wearing the hijab just for one day. Is the hijab oppressing or liberating? Why not step into the shoes of a hijabi and try it for yourselves? We hope that you gain a wealth of knowledge and experience with a slightly different definition of freedom. World Hijab Day is an initiative which started inviting Muslims and non-Muslims alike to come and experience hijab for a day. Here today I have, I have Jess to, who can speak about her experience in putting on the hijab and how, how she felt the reaction was to her putting on the hijab and the experience of her putting on the hijab. Can this lead to more understanding within the community? Jess, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, first of all, like everyone's been very interested in your move in wearing the hijab, the steps. We've seen media outlets um, highlighting your story. So to start off with, uh, many people were asking, how did you actually come to find out about Hijab Day, the World Hijab Day? And you know, how, what, what led you to find out about that? I have a friend in Australia called Widian who I met when she came over to my university on an exchange. She was doing something in journalism and still is. <laughs> and she posted on Facebook that she would like all of her non-Muslim and Muslim friends who don't wear the veil to try it for a day. So I immediately signed up and said, yep, I'm in. And then I realised that I'd never worn one before. So I thought, OK, I'll go out and try and wear one and see whether I can actually wear this thing. And then I noticed that people were looking at me slightly funny and or not looking at me at all. And I thought, right, OK, if they're not going to look at me if I've got a simple scarf around my head, let's try it for a month and see what happens. <laughs> see if people's reactions change or if I get discriminated against permanently or if people are actually nicer to me. And then it kind of snowballed from there and it just got, you know, I mean, I posted the video on YouTube just as a kind of diary thing. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, I've got someone from the BBC emailing me going, by the way, would you mind doing a radio interview? Ah, <laughs> uh, OK then. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just, a, I'm literally just a music student originally from Ramsgate. I never ever thought I'd end up on the BBC doing interviews, being on the web, having loads of views on a video, you know. Yeah. At times I just sit there and go, am I sure this is really happening? Is this supposed to happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hi, I'm Jess, I'm 21 from Norwich and I'm a non-Muslim. However, as you can see, I'm wearing a hijab or headscarf as it's more commonly known. The reason I'm wearing a hijab is simple. My friend asked me to. She, want, she didn't want me to look stupid, but it's because it's World Hijab Day on February the 1st this year, and she was asking all of her non-Muslim friends to join her in wearing the hijab. I've wanted to wear a hijab for some time now, but I've always shied away from it because I didn't feel I could because I'm not Muslim. However, my friend assures me that the hijab is simply a sign of modesty, although it does obviously have connotations with Islam. So today I thought, why not, and did my best to create a hijab with the scarf I'm wearing. I have ordered two hijabs and some pins, but until they arrive, uh, this will have to do. However, my optimism of wearing the hijab wasn't quite shared with the rest of the world. On my walk to university today, I saw over 60 people, and of those people, 16 of them looked me in the eye, and only three of them smiled back at me. Everybody else either studiously ignored me, or looked at me and then very hastily looked away. It was surprisingly upsetting for me as I'm not used to being avoided in the street. Even my partner noticed that we were being avoided, almost as if we had the lurgy. This made me realise that people are often casually racist without realising it. By looking at someone and then looking away, you make them feel as if they should be ashamed. I certainly felt that way. I felt as if I should be looking down on the floor in shame, although I couldn't really work out why I should be ashamed or indeed what I should be ashamed of. 
The people who looked at me seemed to have a surprised and confused look on their face, as if they couldn't work out why a white girl would be wearing a hijab. A lot of people expect those who wear the hijab to be of African or Middle Eastern origin. It was quite interesting, your story was very interesting because it gave us the different perspective on wearing the hijab as us wearing the hijab every day. And it was what interesting, in your video you mentioned that when you wore the hijab and you're walking down the street that people that usually would smile at you weren't smiling at you or would try to avoid contact. You know, before you put on the hijab, did you notice that this was a problem or an issue? Um, in the community, for example, um, did you realise there was discrimination to the Muslim peers or the Muslim women around you, or were you just, you didn't really notice until you became, until you wore the hijab yourself? Well, I haven't, well, in Norwich, there are a lot of Muslims around, but you don't really see them on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. I didn't realise there were quite so many until our new mosque opened and I saw all the sisters, and I don't know, I didn't, I guess it hadn't really... I hadn't really noticed it because I didn't see that many Muslims. I mean, my hometown doesn't have that many Muslims in and Norwich has a lot of Muslims in, but I don't know where they are. And then as soon as I put the hijab on, I realised, hang on, the discrimination really is that bad. Mm. You know, I mean, before you, you thought it was just all media hype and, you know, making it out to be worse than it was, but it was actually pretty bad. I mean. I walked down the street and was like, I, f I, think, I feel like I should be ashamed of something and I've got no idea what I should be ashamed of. You know, I haven't done anything weird, I haven't broken the law, why am I ashamed of myself? Yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned that there isn't much Muslims around your area or Muslim women. Um, so when you wore the hijab, did you feel like, you know, how was the experience putting it on? Did you feel like there was negative, did you receive any negative attention or negative reactions from people putting it on? What was the reactions of the people around you to you wearing the hijab? Was it positive, negative? How was it like? Well, the general public have been all right about it. I mean, I get a lot more respect in shops now and people are more willing to tell me where to go if I'm lost or look lost. But, I mean, it's, it's mostly online that people are rude. I mean, my profile has ended up on the Ban Islam page on Facebook, wow. so yeah. I'm definitely famous now. Okay. <laughs> I have made it. Yeah. And, I mean, that, that was the hardest thing to take, because I was like, really, why are you putting me on a ban Islam page? I'm just a kid, you know. I mean, I know I'm 21, but, you know, I should not be on a ban Islam page. But it's, it's literally just people who sit behind a keyboard and think, oh, this person looks a bit different. What can I say that will make them feel bad? And, you know, they just hope to bring you down. And all it makes me do is just go, you know what, I feel even more empowered now. I'm going to continue doing this and make a stand, because it's idiots like you that have given Muslims a bad name. Exactly. I think there's so much misunderstanding about hijab and Muslims in general, about um, you know us wearing the hijab, who we're like, and I think that's why we get sometimes backlash. And I think even me being in the public eye, you know, you get that same, you get that same um, negative um, comments from people that mm. don't, don't know about Islam, it's just misunderstanding. And they just assume that you put the hijab on, that means you are definitely an Arab, you definitely come from Iraq, and you are definitely a terrorist, and they don't stop and think, well actually this woman speaks with a British accent, yeah. has a British family, was born in Britain. Yeah. You know, they just assume things, and it's really stupid to assume things. You should just go and talk to someone, and if you have a problem with them, you know, have the decency to say it to their face. Exactly, yeah. Um, there was one thing I wanted to say, like, when you put it on, did you get any, like, weird questions? Because sometimes us growing, up in, <laughs> us growing up in high school and college, we get ra the most random questions about mm. our hijab. Did you, what did you, did you get any of these, like, random questions? Well, because I'm getting married in August, people keep asking me if I'm having a church wedding, and I don't know why they assume that Muslims get married in church. Yeah. And I've, what other ones have I had? I've had, did your husband force you to? Yeah, that's so, that's a usual one. And when I say that my husband didn't force me to and he's not Muslim, they then ask me, is your husband going to convert to Islam? Yeah. And then, what's the other ones I've got? I've had... Um, I've had, I've had quite a few weird ones. I mean, there are some people that go, oh, so are you able to, um, you know, are you able to eat out? Are you able to go in restaurants? Mm -hmm. And I just go, yes. You know, it might not have the invocation of the blessing from God over it, but, you know, as long as it's not pork, yeah. <laughs> you know. Now that's the thing, I hope like those who are watching this interview, I know this interview broadcasts worldwide and it will be online as well, I hope that the non-Muslims who come across this realise that we're like 
we're Muslim women are like normal people. We mm. live normal lives, and just because we dress, we choose to dress modestly, doesn't really make us or alienate us from society. We're not an insular society. We, you know, I mean, if you look at me, I'm wearing jeans and heeled boots. You know, I've worn that since. You know, I've I've always worn the clothes I'm wearing. Exactly. I've always dressed modestly. I've never been one to have everything on show, and I, d I don't think women should because. The women who have everything on show then say, but we want respect. And you have to think, you know, you're contradicting yourself. Exactly. You know, you've got your chest on display, you've got your legs on display. You're handing it to a man on a plate, really. Yeah. And you can't expect him to sit down and talk to you about world politics if all he can see is your double Ds. Yeah. You know? That's true. You know. um, now coming to hijab, what do you feel like hijab means? What is hijab? What, what is hijab set out to achieve? I think many people misunderstand what hijab is actually set out to achieve. So what do you think hijab actually means? And what is it, what does it aim to achieve when a woman puts on the hijab? Well, I can only speak from my personal experience, but for me, it was about just modesty yeah. and saying, you know, yes, I am a beautiful woman, but no, you can't see it. You know, the only people that are allowed to see it are my partner and my family. And if you don't fall into that category, then you can't see it. I mean, it do, you know, it does have connotations with Islam. I mean, it's the most obvious symbol going that you're a Muslim. But that's not the only symbol. It's a symbol of modesty. It's a symbol of piety. You know, you're just saying to the world, I am a woman to be taken seriously and respected. I'm not somebody that you can take the, take the mickey out of. You can't make lewd jokes in front of me. I'm here to be respected and I'm here to be taken on my own merit rather than yeah. my body. Exactly, yeah. It's, you know, I think growing up in this society, sometimes I felt like, especially in high school and college, and, you know, women were seen as a sexual commodity mm. and it was all about wearing the short skirts and the revealing tops. And that's what I think women began to st strive to achieve. But when we cover up, we're saying, you know, recognize us for our intellect, our knowledge, our personality, rather than what I look like or how my body is. And women compare themselves to other women. I mean, you see in magazines perfect airbrushed figures. You know, you see Kelly Brook in a bikini yeah. and women think, oh, I want to look like that. And I think Muslim women are saying, well, actually, I don't care what she looks like. She looks fine from here, but I don't want to be Kelly Brook because I'm never going to be Kelly Brook. I will be someone who looks like Kelly Brook, mm. you know. Exactly. And I think, I think Muslim women are actually the more liberated because you don't have to go around comparing yourself to other women and going, oh, her headscarf's nicer than mine, mm. you know, her skirt's nicer. You know, we're all Muslims together. It doesn't yeah. matter what you look like. Exactly. And I think that's, that's something I felt as well. You know, the way you speak, I feel like you're really speaking how we really feel. Because I felt like as well that we've broken free from the shackles of society. You know, we're not... We're not you know, I feel like the media puts so much emphasis of mm. how we should look like, how we should behave, how should the we act. The perfect body, the perfect face, the perfect Exactly. Thing. And yeah. we're free from that because we've chosen not to um, label ourselves and fall into that trap. So Perfection is unobtainable. You can never be perfect. There will always be one person out there who says, you could do this better or you look stupid like that. Yeah. You know, what's the point? Exactly. <laughs> Um, many people may ask, is this how you perceived hijab as before you wore it? D did you have a completely different understanding or perception of hijab before you put it on? Or ha you know, did you always think of hijab in this way? I don't know. I didn't really think about the hijab, really. I mean, I knew Muslim women wore the hijab, but that was about as far as it went for me. I didn't, I mean, I, I came into this whole process not knowing a great deal about Islam, and I still don't know a great deal about it. But I think I just thought Muslim women wear the hijab and that's that really. Yeah. I didn't really think about why they wore it or what it symbolised. But I could never understand why people made fun of other Muslims because of the hijab. I could, that was one thing that I never understood and I still don't understand. Mm. So you've always, always had that religious tolerance or understanding towards... I mean, I was raised with a Catholic mother and a Church of England father, but they don't go to church and they've always accepted other people just as they are. You know, they, yeah. they say, well, maybe that's not for us, but that doesn't give us the right to be rude about yeah. it. And I went to a very, very tolerant school. I mean, we had a couple of Muslims in our school. Mm. And I don't know, it just never crossed my mind that people could be so intolerant of other religions. It just 
I don't know, it just didn't cross my mind really. Yeah. Um, what really interested you in taking that step to put on, on the hijab? Was it just your friend posting it or was that interest there way before you saw the World Hijab Day and your friend's um, invitation for Muslims and non-Muslims to put it on? You know, was your, were you interested in putting on the hijab way before? I want, I'd always wanted to try it, but because it's obviously associated with Muslims, I always thought, well, I can't wear that because I'm not a Muslim mm. and people will misunderstand. Yeah. But then when I was told it was for, you know, for a very, very worthy cause, I thought, yeah. right, well, I don't care if people think I'm a Muslim or not. You know, if they do, they do. And if they don't, not my problem. I mean, nowadays, I don't mind if they call me a Muslim because they're actually right this time. <laughs> they're actually, you know, they'll have got it right. <laughs> so you're a Muslim now? <laughs> I converted on the 1st of February. Oh, so that's, that's amazing. What, a uh, week ago? Yeah, around a week ago. And I take, I'm taking my Shahada tomorrow. Yay! Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. I'm sort of christening our new mosque because I think I'll be the first Shahada there. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, there's that's probably not a big Muslim, like you said, in Muslim community. Yeah. A, they're, they're fairly large, mm. but they're not huge. Okay, no, probably not like London. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's one question I wanted to ask as well. Did anyone oppose you to wearing it or were very negative towards you wearing it? Or, you know, from you spoke about the reactions of strangers, but mm. did anyone, your friends, your family, or your close-knit um, people that surround you, did anyone really oppose to you wearing it? Well, um, my, fr my friends have, you know, just asked me why I'm doing it and then just gone, that's fine. Mm. But, I mean, I had a fairly negative reaction from my parents. I mean, I didn't tell them I'd converted. I haven't told them that yet. But I did say that I was taking part because I thought, you know, it would, it would be courtesy to let them know. But, I mean, my, my parents urged me against doing the radio interviews and even doing this interview because they said oh, you'll be attacked in the street, people will hit you. And I just said, if people attack me in the street, I'll call the police. That's what they're there for. Yeah. You know, it's not like if someone comes up to me and punches me in the face, I'm going to take the hijab off and say, oh, my God, I can't do this. I will just go down to the nearest police station and say, hi, I've been assaulted by a man in the street because I'm wearing the hijab. Yeah. You know, I mean, I get that they're concerned for my welfare because Muslims have been treated badly in the past. But... You know, I'm capable of taking care of myself and if I am attacked and if people are rude to me, I will get justice. It's yeah. as simple as that. Exactly. You know, we do have a justice system for a reason. It's good to use it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think that because there's so much connotations to the hijab that people may, people may feel that. But like you said, you, you're basically, you still fit into society. You haven't alienated mm. yourself from society. You just have a garment on, which is a sign of modesty. And I think that's what people don't... I mean, my, I mean, my cousin on my partner's side put it best when he said, here in Canada, we don't care. She's just a woman with a cloth on her head. Wow. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. it's the best attitude ever. We don't care. <laughs> You're yeah. wearing a cloth on your head. I'm not wearing a cloth on my head. Who cares? Yeah, I think it's coexisting in society. I would love that. to see that attitude in Britain where people go, yeah. so what if she, you know, she's wearing a cloth on her head. She's wearing a sari. She's not wearing anything other than Western dress. What the hell? It doesn't matter. You yeah. know, we're all humans. We all live together. We might as well get on. Exactly. And if you don't get on with somebody, either move or don't talk to them. Yeah. It's just the <laughs> thing. I wonder why we can't unite. You know, we're all humans at the end of the day. We all have the same understanding. We're, we're all living in the same country. And I don't understand why there isn't much understanding. I think it's because people are scared of differences. They see so... I mean... I, I have Asperger's syndrome, so I was born different. It's a social communication disorder. Okay. And people in my school picked up on the fact that I was different, but they didn't know why I was different. Mm. And that made it worse. I mean, they bullied me really intensely through secondary school. Okay. Okay. And it was because they didn't know why I was different. They just knew, that's Jess, she's different, we don't know why. We're scared of it. People are scared of the differences. Yeah. But when you look at the differences and talk to the people who you perceive as different, you realise that actually the only thing different is their belief system or the way they worship. They're still the same person. Yeah. I mean, I had to put a disclaimer out on um, my story online where I said, I am still the same person. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't changed. I'm not going to wander around doing strange, crazy stuff. I'm still me. I've just got a hijab on and I'm a Muslim now. Yeah. You know, those are the only two differences. That's true.
World Hijab Day is designed to counteract the misconceptions placed on Muslim women and hijab. It's hard to believe that in modern day Britain, Muslim women still feel they are discriminated against for wearing the hijab. Now the question is, is this discrimination, this religious discrimination present in other parts of the world? She was working at a popular clothing store in Hollister when she was fired, told her hijab or headscarf was not allowed under Abercrombie and Fitch's look policy. Here to tell her story is Hani Khan. She is the one on the left there in silhouette because of death threats she has been receiving since coming out. Carolyn, against... her dad is laid off. She needed money for school. She says she was so excited when the manager of this McDonald's on Crook Road called her for an interview. But then she says the excitement turned to something else. She was like, so do you have to wear that thing on your head? And I was like, my hijab? Yes, I do. 19-year-old Nasia Barlasgar says that's what a manager at a McDonald's restaurant asked her during a job interview, an interview for a job she did not get. I asked her if there was anything wrong with my interview, and she said no, she just decided to go with someone else. A report released by a leading Turkish think tank says women who wear the Islamic-style headscarf face discrimination in the workplace, which is leading to low participation by women in Turkey's labor force. The other customers at this bakery near Waco seem to hear everything, but they barely look at the Muslim woman, even when the language is tough to take. Get back on the camel and go back wherever you came from. Sir, I'm an American. I was born and raised no, in the country. No, you're not. Americans don't wear towels on their head. Muslim Americans say these are words they hear all the time in all parts of the country. But here at the bakery, what the customers don't know is that this Muslim woman and the man behind the counter are actors. The bakery is working with us, all part of a primetime hidden camera experiment on prejudice and patriotism. Please take your business elsewhere. Am I asking too much? When no one even tries to help her, she makes a direct appeal. Sir, would you mind ordering me an apple strudel? That's, that's why I'm here. Uh, this, I, mean, I, I can give you the money. I have no problem with That's not a problem with the money, huh? Uh, Please no, sir. Huh? I'm not going to let no, you have a job. But when he gives her the cold shoulder, she finally just leaves. You could have helped her out. You could have spoken up. Why not? Me speak up for her? Well, if he would try to do some harm to her or something, then I would have. She's not American. Others seem to agree with our actor no. as to who's an American and American. who's not. Is it all based on the way we look? I'm an American citizen. I just would like an apple strudel, please. Well, I'm sorry. Then why don't you dress like an American? You're this so American. This is for religious purposes, sir. And I, I don't think you have any right to say anything. So I'm religious. I don't wear, you know, Halloween costumes around. I mean, am I wrong here, sir? Not me. I run no. my business the way I want That's to run. Right. That's right. Don't come in here with that huge This customer is adamant that the man behind the counter is doing the right thing. But the fact is, it's against the law to deny service to someone based on their race or religion. Jack DeVidio is a social psychologist at Yale University. So when we as Americans feel threatened from the outside, we're going to define ourselves in very rigid fashions, either you're with me, and if you're not really one of me, then you must be somebody else who's against me. Meanwhile, back at the bakery, our actor is at it again. But how do I know you're not a terrorist? Terrorists look like you. But this time, the customers are sympathizing with the Muslim woman. Right, I know, but can you blame me? Yeah, I can't blame you, actually. Why? What's the problem? All right, we'll get out of here. And he's not the only one who walks out in anger. You need to stop segregating against people. It's wrong. Uh, excuse me? She's an American. No, like you're a bad American. Time and again, people speak out with their pocketbooks. You lettered a couple of customers, just so you know. But look what happens when this man threatens to leave. You're not a good American, sir. Uh, I believe I am a good American. My son just came back from serving in the army for over a year in Iraq, and that has nothing to do with her rights. I understand that. Thank you, sir. And I hear what you're saying, but I, 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 I can't mean, believe I can't believe you would you would be so discriminatory. I'm deeply offended by that. I, I'm sorry to offend you, sir, but I've got to live with myself. Seething, the man vows to fight back. I will let people know this. I've stopped here every time I come by this place, and I'll never stop here again. Never have we seen reactions so polarized, from a thumbs up for prejudice to an emphatic 
thumbs down. Two different Americas, both convinced they're patriotic. At the end of the day, 13 people stood up for the Muslim woman, while six sided with the clerk. But the majority of the bystanders, 22, did or said absolutely nothing. So you talk about the discrimination that is around, that is apparent. How do you feel we can iron out these misconceptions? How do you feel like we can bring a more understanding to the people that may not know about hijab, may not know about Muslims, may think that um, hijab is about oppression, is about oppressing a woman, you know, all the, mis all the misunderstanding present. How can we iron out these misconceptions? How do you feel? Go and ask somebody. The best thing you can do is find the nearest Muslim that you can, sit down with them and talk to them and ask them why. Ask about Islam. Ask about if it's a woman, why do you wear the hijab? Why do you pray five times a day? Why do you do this? You know, why this, why that? Just ask why. Yeah. You know, I mean, reading the Quran helps as well. But if you've got an English translation, depending on the translation, it can be a bit of a weighty book to get through. I mean, I'm only on chapter five. Yeah. So, you know, but the best thing you can do is sit down and ask someone for their story and ask them why. And, you know, I mean, most of my knowledge of Islam has come from asking why, you know, why do you fast in Ramadan? Why do you do that? You know, why do you do the voodoo? Why do you pray five times a day? You know, why are some things allowed and some not? Yeah. You know, that's the best. Because if you understand why, you can breed more tolerance. And with more tolerance, we can all live together. Exactly. And it's very simple. And I wish the people of Britain would understand that. Yeah. <laughs> it would be so much easier. Yeah. People okay. just understood that asking why is the best step. Or yeah. even just sitting, you know, sitting down and talking to somebody who's Muslim on the bus or at the bus stop or in the doctor's waiting surgery. Mm. You know, just ask why and ask how their story came about and, you know, were you born Muslim? Did you convert? Why did you convert? Mm. You know. That's true. But don't ask the really stupid questions like, were you forced to? <laughs> that won't help anybody. Yeah. That's the thing, when someone doesn't understand something, the best way to reform is to actually ask, and perhaps you'll get your answer. Um, mm. <clears throat> many born Muslims and Muslims um, and Muslim women that do observe the hijab, they, many of them receive a great deal of discrimination due to their hijab, and many people, like I said, feel like we're oppressed or someone's forcing us to put it on. When it's the choice that we're putting it on, why do you think this um, idea or this notion is about? Why do you think people think that? Did it spring from something or why do you, how do you think this came about? I think it's because in some countries, in a minority of countries, women are forced to wear the hijab. Yeah. I think it's because people have taken the actions of a minority mm. and applied it to the majority yeah. and they don't under, you know, because they've seen some women in maybe Iran or Iraq or Egypt or Sri Lanka or Libya, yeah. where they're made to walk to wear it, they think, oh, that must be the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand the concept of a free choice. But I th I, it is a complete misunderstanding. I mean, that's not to you know diminish the importance of the fact that some women are made to wear it. But in Western society, we have a democracy. We have free choice and free will. Mm -hmm. And it is a choice. I mean, nobody made me put the hijab on. Nobody has ever oppressed me and nobody ever will. I chose to put this on. I chose to become a Muslim. Yeah. I mean, most situations, the woman converts for her husband or converts for another reason. But, you know, my situation is pretty unique because I converted to Islam and my partner is an agnostic. Hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's not always because we're forced to. Exactly, yeah. I think it's, it's people think that they mix culture with religion, so maybe people are forced culturally mm -hmm. and they think that's part of religion. And like you said, they put the minority on the majority, which is quite sad. We live in a society which is so body conscious, but it's all about the body image. We see the billboards, we see the magazines, as you mentioned, and you know we have this um, multi-millionaire multi-millionaire pound entity, which is the fashion industry, which really you know draws women in. So. And we see that women always strive to achieve that perfect image that we see in a magazine and maybe um, sometimes end up revealing too much. Um, and, you know, so it's, sometimes it's a battle of modesty, it's a battle of self-respect. Do you feel like the hijab is the answer, like we said, about freeing ourselves from the society and not falling into this, um, this pit hole, shall we say? 
Well, I wouldn't say the hijab is the be-all and end-all absolute answer to everybody's problems. I mean, dressing more modestly will certainly help, you know. I mean, I've always dressed modestly and although I've always been fashion aware, yeah. so I will wear things that suit me and things that make me look nice, I won't go, oh my goodness, so-and-so in the magazine is wearing that, therefore I must go and find the nearest cheap knockoff. I just go, that looks nice on her. Wouldn't suit me. Yeah. I find, you know, I think that women should learn to respect themselves. You know, you don't have to have everything on display to get that amazing job in the office that you want. Yeah. You know, you don't have to sleep with your boss to get somewhere, you know. I mean, I got where I am on my own intellect and my own merits. And when all the other girls around me were busy showing off everything they had, I was one of the minority that said, I'm not doing that and I never will. You know, yeah. I, I think the, the hijab can help those who want to wear it. Yeah. But I think the biggest step forward women could make would be saying to themselves, I don't have to show everything. Yeah. I can go out in a jumper that comes to here and has the sleeves to here. I can go out in a knee length skirt and still look nice. And I think it's about teaching our young, our young generations not to look in the magazines and go, mum, I want to look like that. I mean, I found an amazing picture on Google of a young girl standing on a set of scales with the caption, don't let her think like this. And that's what I think we should do. Because yes, it is nice to look good, and yes, you should take care of your body, but your body is only going to take you so far. There is going to come a point in your life when your body won't get you that job that you want. It won't get you the pay rise. And if you haven't got your intellect to fall back on, you're out of a job. Mm -hmm. And I think women should value their brains more than their bodies, because it's your brains that get you places. Exactly. Yeah. No, I find it quite astonishing that, you know, in 21st century Britain, let's say, that people still feel that they need to put their bodies in spray, especially women, to get that high job. And I think, like, so sometimes even today, that even Muslim women think that, you know, I won't be able to get that job, I won't be a good candidate if, I, if I'm wearing the hijab. And many women take off their hijab to try to fit into that, which is quite sad. Um, what would you You say? should just be honest. You know, if you want that promotion, but you think you won't get it because of what you're wearing, talk to your employer about it. Say to them, you know, I worry that I'm going for this job promotion and I don't think I'll get it because of this. You know, and if they say that that is the reason, then you need to leave that job and sue them for discrimination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, nine times out of ten, mm. your fears are slightly unfounded. I wouldn't say they're completely 100% rubbish. You know, there are some people in this world who would do that. Yeah. But I think just be honest, be yourself. And if it's meant to happen, it will. And if it's not, it's because something better's coming along. Yeah. You know, I mean, I want, I used to want to be absolutely a famous writer. I wanted to be on the A-list, on the red carpet, as famous as Jennifer Aniston. I am never going to be as famous as Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. <laughs> I will never be that famous. Yeah. And having seen the dark side of that fame, I don't want to be that famous anymore. Yeah. You know, and if I am famous, I want it to be for something worthwhile like this. I want it to be because I did something that meant something. Good cause, yeah. Coming to the hijab and what we're speaking about that people, you know, sometimes they feel that they can't fit into a certain job because of the hijab. What would be your message to Muslim women, born Muslim women, who don't feel confident in the hijab and have, you know, have become very self-conscious or, you know, want to take off the hijab or women that have fallen into this? What would be your message from a person that chose to come and wear the hijab? What would be your message? Just go out and wear it with your head held high. If anybody has a problem with it, it's their problem, not yours. Do not, you know, do not be ashamed of covering up. I mean, it, it's a really sorry state of affairs when we're scared of covering up. I mean, really. Yeah. You know, just go out, be yourself. And if people are rude to you, that is their problem, not yours. You are not the one to blame for that bloke in the street coming up to you and telling you to go back to your own country. That's his problem. And he yeah. needs educating, severely. You know, just be yourself. Wear the hijab, be proud of who you are. And if you're worried about something, pray to Allah about it or talk to your employer about it or talk to your family. You know, don't hide it all away and go, oh my God, I can't wear this. I'm going to look horrible. I'll stick out. Yeah. You know, at least you're sticking out for a reason. Exactly. You're sticking out because you have faith. Yeah. You are sticking out because you choose to be different. Mm. I mean, 
you know, I never wanted to be like everybody else. I never wanted to be one of a thousand sheep all wearing the same thing. You know, I've always wanted to say, you know what, I'm unique and I'm proud of it. And I do not think Muslim women who wear the hijab should be ashamed of it. I think it's something to be really proud of. You're different for a reason. You're yeah. different because you are a Muslim. That's very powerful words. Um, I hope that all those that are watching do really ponder upon your words. Uh, many people have asked us the final question. They asked us, ask Jess, would she, is she going to carry on wearing the hijab? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I won't, because my parents don't yeah. really accept Islam, I won't wear it around them because of respect for their views. You know, I don't think it's fair of me to force the hijab upon them. You know, maybe in time they will learn to accept it or come to tolerate it more. But right now it's very new for them. So I won't wear it when I'm around them. Yeah. But the rest of the time I will wear it. You know, once I learn not to stab myself in the head with the pins. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you, you know, we've talked about like the negative attention that you've had from certain people or like the reactions. But, you know, what's the positives of wearing hijab? Have you seen any positives um, to wearing it? What, what's been the benefits of wearing hijab? I'm just so much happier. I mean, before I came into Islam and learned about it and wore the hijab, I was nuts. You know, I'm not going to lie, I was nuts. I would argue with people over the smallest thing. I'd get annoyed over someone leaving a light on when it was supposed to be off. I'd get annoyed if someone didn't do something. You know, I blamed myself for a lot of the shortcomings that I have. And I beat myself up on a daily basis because of what happened to me. You know, I know it wasn't my fault that yeah. the bullies did what they did. And I know it wasn't my fault that I am the way I am but I blamed myself a lot. And then when I came into Islam, I realized, actually, this is not my fault. It happened and it was horrible. And I had possibly one of the worst childhoods I can imagine, wow. but I'm here and it was for a reason. And, you know, Allah will show me that reason mm. in his own time. And I'm just so much happier. I feel like an entire weight has just gone. You know, I don't have to worry about the past anymore. I mean, sure, it hurts and it will hurt for a long time. But I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry what people think of me. Yeah. I don't have that need to be better than everybody else to validate myself. I don't need to have the best house, the best car, the best job, the best this, that, the other. You know, I used to look at other couples and go, oh, I wish my relationship was like that. I wish I had that. And then I came into Islam and I realized, actually, my relationship is better than theirs yeah. because we trust each other and we love each other and we don't base it on shallow things like, you know, how good our sex life is, how beautiful so-and-so look. You know, we trust each other. Exactly. And I would rather have the trust in a relationship and no sex life at all than an amazing sex life and not being able to trust your girlfriend because you cheated on her with your ex and you're now paranoid. You it's, know. It's, it's, I just love being a Muslim because I'm everybody's sister, I'm everybody's auntie, and at some point I'll be someone's mother. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like finding a massive family that you fit into and who loves you and wants the best for you. Instead of having a load of shallow friends, well, most of my, fr I will clarify, most of my friends are absolutely wonderful people and I love yeah. them to bits. Yeah. But I do have some friends who are what my mum would describe as fair weather friends. They're there when everything's lovely yeah. and the minute you have problems, they're always like that to blame you. Yeah. Oh, this is your fault. That's your fault. And nowadays I just turn around and go, it's not my fault. It happened. Exactly. No, I, I, you know, listening to you, I don't think you should really worry about the past at all. Like, as soon as I met you, is that sisterhood that we have is, it's amazing because Islam just gives that sisterhood to the, to the, to, it's to like us. Having a load of friends that are just going to be there, whatever happens, and you yeah. know, you could mess up so bad, mm. and they would still be there at the end of the day. Definitely, it's true. <laughs> um, finally, just like, just to kind of close up the the interview. Do you feel like? initiatives like the World Hijab Day and others which really invite non-Muslims to really experience what we 
do or what we wear and to place them in our shoes, do you think this will foster better understanding within the society we live in? Definitely. I mean, you know, OK, you know, some people have said, oh, one day is not enough to understand. And they're right on a level, mm. you know. You would need, if you, if you are a non-Muslim experiencing it, you would need a lifetime to understand it fully. But as a one-day experience, experiencing what Muslim women go through on a daily basis, it's a really powerful learning tool. I mean, if you go out, say, say you're a non-Muslim woman and you go out wearing the hijab for one day and you get a whole load of racial abuse, you are going to understand better what happens to Muslim women. You, are, you know, you have to have the shoe on your foot, you know, you should walk a mile in someone else's shoes before you judge them. And I think, you know, I think this is great because it's to show that actually we are human, we are normal, whatever normal is. Yeah. And, you know, just try and be like us for one day. I mean, come on, it's one day out of your life. You know, it's not like we're asking you to do it forever. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even asking you to convert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, it's, it's powerful words there. Finally, just to last off, sum off um, to summarise the interview, what would be your last message to everyone watching this interview now? From the non-Muslims, we're, we're going to get a wide range of audience watching this, from the Muslims to non-Muslims, what would be your last message to them? Um, for all the non-Muslims, go and find a Muslim and talk to them. Just go out, whatever you're doing right now, unless it's night time, stop what you're doing, find a Muslim, talk to them, yeah. and keep doing that you know, talk to these people because we have a voice. Yeah. You're just not listening to it. Yeah. So open your ears, please. Yeah. To all the Muslims out there, keep doing what you're doing. Talk to people if they ask you. You know, don't get offended if they ask you daft questions. I know it, you must hear them about a thousand and one times. Yeah. But, you know, just answer, be open and be proud of yourselves because, you know, it, it works two ways. I mean, you can go on about all the non-Muslims and say, oh, you need to listen, you need to listen. But on the other hand, we need to be open to talking. We need to be open to discussing it because it's not a private hidden religion. And if you don't talk about it, how is anyone going to understand? Yeah, exactly. Jess, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you on and I think you're such a beautiful person. You shouldn't really worry about what happened in the past. And, and it's so amazing to see someone so proud in their hijab. So. It's, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you. It's been good to be here. Thank you very much. After speaking with Jess, we see how wearing the hijab has led her to enter the religion of Islam. This shows us that the hijab is not just a cloth. The hijab governs all aspects of one's life, one's behaviour and attitude.